Well, um, why don't we get started? I think we're past two o'clock. Yeah, we are. So let's uh, let's get started, and I'll I'll show you some of the places that we have walked and are are still exploring. Some of them more than others. Um, I wanted to show you this map to start with, and I'm assuming you can all see the map okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. If you start on the upper, far upper right hand corner, the purple arrow points at what is the Indian Creek Recreation Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have walked that from time to time. Um, and it, it basically goes down to this second. If you head to the left mm -hmm. on the screen, you go to Corporate Woods Founders Park and keep going, yeah. you go to Shannon Valley, Valley Park and keep going, yeah. you go to Cross Creek Park. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, oh, and I skipped Indian Valley in there. So, so there are basically two, four, five different parks in that stretch. And so I want to walk you through those uh, and show you, just talk about each of them uh, in turn. Um, so let's start with the Indian Creek uh, Recreation Center. And I'm, I'm going to post this slideshow so you don't have to worry about writing down, you know, addresses or anything else of that sort. And periodically, I'm going to take a swig of water because my throat's dry today. So, starting at 103rd and Marty, you can really go the other direction, but I'm going to take you, um, yeah, as you yeah, come yeah. out of the parking lot, uh, head to the right, which is west. And that's the direction I'm going to take you first. You can still go across the, go the other direction, which takes you over and under Metcalf and you know continues on indian creek <coughs> excuse me trail um covers most of johnson county it it you can start it in the upper right hand corner of it or the which would be what north uh northeast and head all the way to the uh, southwest and you can tie in with this park or this uh trail at a number of different locations along the way so we're going to start at Indian Creek Recreation Center. There are golf there's uh, it's next to the uh, the golf course and there are tennis courts in there. But I'm more interested in the walking. So again, if you come out of the parking lot, Ooh, go to the right, go across this little bridge. It takes you into a neighborhood, and you walk down the sidewalk, just regular sidewalk for a ways, and then you've got an option. Uh, the road goes straight, obviously. And where we're headed is to the other side of the road. And um, but the trail actually goes underneath. And one of the tips is most of these places, if you follow the, the blacktop, you're on the trail. If you follow the concrete, you're on, uh, on somebody's sidewalk. And, and both will get you different places. But um, this, this blacktop trail is the beginning, and it goes down underneath the road. It makes it, it's a fairly steep little one. So sometimes I've seen people just kind of walk across the street to the other side because you can catch in with work with that because it, it makes a loop, makes a loop underneath and comes up on the other side. Excuse me, Jonathan, is that 103rd sure. you're going under? Uh, we're, no, that's actually, I think it may be Conser. I'm not 100% sure, but you're at uh, the recreation centers at Marty and 103rd. Right. And so you're 103rd is back behind you. And you're walking south at this point in time. Gotcha. And along the way, you'll see Indian Creek all the way, because that's obviously why it's called Indian Creek Trail. Uh, it goes throughout, uh, throughout Johnson County. Um, parts of the trail from this point, from the recreation center, the Indian um, uh, Creek uh, Recreation Center on, part of it is a little rough. There's this one hill, there are a couple of hills where the concrete's breaking up and all, but it's, or the blacktop is, but it's, it's not, it's certainly passable. It's not anything you're going to stumble on, but it's, uh, it's also very pretty for a little ways. And then you go between I-435 and the, the, uh, um, uh, the golf course. And this is, this is a trail or walk that goes between the two. On the left-hand side, you can see the retaining wall or the sound wall for the uh, for four, I-435. Uh, and you just continue on down. Now, this is 
my way of thinking is not the prettiest part of it, but it is a way to get from here to there. Mm -hmm. And here's looking back the way you've come. And again, you can see the retaining wall on the right hand side, a fair number amount of shrubbery around. The one thing I find, uh, the one disadvantage of this route is it's somewhat noisy. You can hear the expressway. You can hear the, that. Also on the way back, I, I saw this wrong way sign and I knew I was going the right way, um, but that's, that's actually for, I think the Antioch uh, exit from 435. But I just thought it was kind of an interesting shot. Um, when you get a little further along, you come to Antioch Road. Um, and if you follow that trail behind the sign on up, that takes you actually up to the sidewalk that, that goes along Antioch. What's, uh, what we're gonna do is go to the left as you're facing the sign. We're gonna keep going under, under an I, the uh, Antioch uh, overpass. What's interesting is I thought this was, this sign's interesting. I only skimmed it. I'm gonna, next time I go, I'm gonna read it a little bit more detail. But it basically talks about how Antioch was named for um, a church that was down around 75th and Antioch, uh, one of the original churches in, in Johnson County. And at one point in time in the early 21st century, which I guess is where we are right now, it talks about there being more churches per mile in that on Antioch than pretty uh. much any place else in the country. So mm. um, if you walk this way, stop and read the sign. Here's the underpass. This, this is taking us under uh, Antioch. And it again is once you get under there, it's very nice. It's uh, um, you get further in, you get you get away from the noise of Antioch and 435, etc. <clears throat> and where this leads you to is the Corporal Woods Founders Park. Um, and here's the the plaque, and you can see one of the, the kind of classic Corporal Woods uh, building office building in the background. From this sign, you can go right or left. I went right, which continues on along the Indian Creek Trail. And um, one, one hint I found is that every once in a while, you're not sure which way to go. Uh, the Indian Creek Trail is part of the Discover uh, America, American Discovery Trail. Mm -hmm. And so if you ever have a question, you know, follow the sign. Now, they're not always good signs, but most of the time you've got some fairly good sign signage for it. And I just, I found this on top of one of the signs that says, be a light, and I thought that was kind of neat. So I just took a quick picture of it. Hey, Jonathan, really quick, that American yes. Discovery Trail, is that a national thing? I believe, I believe so. I believe yeah, so. It looks nice. I think it goes all the way across the country, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. I haven't researched it, but I've seen that crop up several places along the, the Indian Trail. Yeah, there was a map on one of the previous uh, signs that showed it going all the way across. Okay. Um, I point this out to you because um, you're going to pass a lot of cyclists. You're going to pass other walkers, of course. You're going to pass some people on skateboards and um, uh, even rollerblades. And whereas they, every, every one of these parks has a sign telling people, stay to the right, let people announce your presence when approaching other trail users. Um, it's probably 50-50 the, the number of uh, cyclists who will say, on your left. Yeah. So, especially in some trails, and I'll try to point them out as we go along, you have to be a little careful because if you come around a bend, and these folks are speeding along pretty at a pretty good clip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you and they could wipe out, and we <laughs> haven't yet, but you just need to be aware of it. So, mm -hmm. there's a uh, over Indian Creek from the Corporate Woods Founders Park. There's a little bridge, which is kind of nice. It takes you back into some into a more wooded area where there are some additional trails. Have any of you gone back there? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No. The nice thing is you can park at at uh, Corporal Woods in the parking lots along there and access the trails fairly easily. Uh, and that makes that 
you know, kind of nice. Now, from start to finish, what I'm showing you um, is about an hour and 45 minute walk. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you, I'll, I'll tell you the places where they're parking. There's parking at the Indian Creek um, Recreation Center. There's parking at Corporate Woods, but there are some places where there, there is no parking readily available, and I'll, I'll tell you that. If you continue on through Corporate Woods, you're gonna go under 109th Street under the, uh, there's a underpass. And I, <laughs> I thought I'd show you some of the artwork I found along the way. <laughs> I, I didn't find too much. They, they kind of cover up a lot of it, but uh, as fast as it appears, but uh, there was a little bit. And of course, one of the nice advantages is that all along the way, you'll see Indian Creek. You know, you have some nice views of it, of the water running up and down the creek, going up and down. Um, I got to this sign, which is right, uh, it's actually looking back towards the way we came. Um, and it's right after we went under College Boulevard. And I don't know if any of you have ever seen this sign, but it talks about 111th Street uh, by any other name, of course, which is College Boulevard. <laughs> but a couple of these pictures on there struck me as interesting. Here's a picture uh, of College Boulevard, uh, obviously from a few years ago. <laughs> so, and this is the picture that interested me the most. Oh, uh, yeah. It talks about it talks about Billington being the founding father, and I didn't capture that. I, oh. I'm biased, so I captured the founding mother, which uh, they, they say is Virginia Krebs. Yeah. So, and it talks about her being the first employee of the college, and you know some of the things mm -hmm. that we we know from having been around the college for a while. But I just thought that was kind of fascinating. Yeah. Hmm. Um, at the end of the trail, the next the next place you get to is a place called Shannon Valley. And I put this up because there, there, are, uh, there are tennis courts and, and parking there, but it appears to be for the residents only. But if you wanted to walk from here back to Corporate Woods, you could do so. Uh, and if, so if you live in that, in that neighborhood, you've got a nice little trail uh, that you can take back over to Corporate Woods and then back all the way to the Indian Creek a recreation center if you wanted to walk that far. But from this point back to the rec center, that's an hour and 45 minutes round trip, you know, if you park one end and go to the other. So again, we've come from the upper right hand corner of the arrow, which is the rec center, down to Corporate Woods, down to Shannon Valley. Now, I didn't walk beyond that. The part I haven't walked is between Shannon Valley and Indian Valley. Uh, but those, there's parking at Indian Valley. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. And I'm going to show you a little bit more of that. But the, the main oh. idea is that it goes, it continues on through. It, it, it's continuous. Questions so far? Mm -mm. Interesting. The nice thing is if you kind of time yourself, you start from any one of those locations and walk along you time yourself and go half half the time you want to go and then turn around and go back the other way so mm -hmm. yeah just to let you know that into that park in johnson county is in olathe and i i've been to the end of that park and have pretty much gone through all the the trail in olathe on a bike not walking on a bike mm -hmm. and uh pretty much up to corporate woods i've done that a couple of times so this is They've done a lot of a lot of work on it. That's a lot of construction. Sometimes you can't go through. But I think it pretty much goes all the way through now, doesn't it, Jonathan? There's no. I, I believe it does. I yeah. believe it does. I'll I'll show you a map at the very end. But oh, uh, you have it. Okay. It's it's pretty continuous. Um, again, I haven't walked between Shannon Valley and Indian Valley, but I've walked from Shannon Valley back to re the rec center and from Indian Valley on to what I'm going to show you next. Okay. Any other questions or comments? So Dave, you're one of those people on the bikes that I have to watch out for. Yeah, I'm very, very careful. I don't really like to ride the trails, but sometimes I just like to go out on the trail just to kind of follow it. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm really, I'm very, very conscious of that. And I do, and I do say on your left, because I've, I've ridden bikes for a long time, so I know. So. Well, 
a, a good you know, half the people do that and are, are right. very good. They ring a bell or, or something. Right. And every time they do that, I, I just say thank you. <laughs> so yeah. hopefully yeah. to encourage them. <laughs> Okay, so Indian Valley Park. This is at the intersection of uh, 116th Circle and Knox. What's really at that intersection is the school, is the elementary school. Uh, and then you walk down, there's parking there, so you could park. Uh, it's alongside the school. It's not the school's parking lot, but it, there's the, the park itself has its own parking lot. And um, so you can see it has a tennis court and it is surrounded by suburbs, as most of this area is. Some of my favorites are the ones that you feel like you're not in the suburbs anymore, that you basically feel you're out in the country. And I'll show you some of those. Mm -hmm. So what, I, what I've done is, if you look on, at the arrow, that's uh, Indian Valley Park. You look at the blue line that goes under the park. Uh, we walked all the way from there back through the parking area, through the tennis courts, and then followed this headed to the west or to the left on, on the map. It goes under 69 Highway, it swings around and comes under Schweitzer, uh, and, by the, and then it goes, it swings around and goes along Indian Creek, sometimes getting close to it and sometimes a little further away. And you get all the way over to Cross Creek Park. And Cross Creek Park has no parking. Uh, unless you want to park along Indian Creek Parkway. And I have seen people do that. Uh, often people will park along the road. It's, Indian Creek Parkway at that point is, is really almost residential. It's not heavily trafficked. And there is a place to park, or right across the street, you can park in, the, in a subdivision and then walk over and, and uh, go to Cross Creek Park. The, the park itself is fairly small, as you can tell. Um, but again, it's a, it's a connection to all those other parks. So that if you want to walk a distance, you've got that option. And they have another little uh, uh, bulletin board or sign that talks about bison in your backyard and, and uh, uh, kind of interesting. Oh. Cool. And this is what some of, from Cross Creek Park, I'm headed towards, um, Quivira Park, and some of that area is um, is very nice. It's uh, like I said, Indian Creek Park way there is fairly quiet. You get into these wooded areas, and it's you feel like you're out in the country. It's it's just very very nice. That's my neighborhood. Okay, I figured that was where you had yeah. done some walking. In fact, that's why I went looking for it, Ellen, because I figured <laughs> you yeah. mentioned some place over there that you walked, and I wanted to find out where that was. So. <laughs> so. Any advice for walkers in there? Well, if my only advice is for me, I wear hearing aids. And if people don't tell me they're coming up, I, I hug the right side because at certain times of day, there are way too many folks that think they own it and not yeah. a walker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that that's the problem with a lot of these areas. There are a couple exceptions to that, but a lot of these areas, especially along the Indian Creek Trail, you get a fair amount of bike traffic. I mean, it's not like bike after bike after bike, but there's a, enough traffic that it's, you know, you have to kind of watch out for them. This is also an area you sometimes have to watch for groups of, I think they're probably training for cross country, groups uh, of kids, high school kids that will run along here. and and they go all the way across and probably three or four deep. Mm. So you know, watch for them. Yeah. You know, I can tell you one of the things I'm, I scare, I'm most scared about when I'm on the trail on a bike is families with small kids. Yeah. yeah. Just, they, you just don't have any idea where they're going yeah. you know, when you come up. So I really slow down when, they have, when there's kids on a trail. Yeah. You, they, they'll, just, they'll just scatter right in front of you sometimes. I, I was always taught that the slower moving person or vehicle has the right of way. And yeah. some of the cyclists don't never learn that lesson. No. Because they really zip through, not so much here, but some of the other uh, areas uh, on Indian Creek Trail. As you keep going, um, you'll 
pass under 119th Street and get to Quivira Park. Now, I'm starting at Quivira Park, uh, the parking lot, which is uh, just beyond this, because again, it's a, a place you can park and, and enter the, the trail. Um, it's, um, it's got some pretty landscaping part of the area. It has a, a playground and, and that sort of thing too. But there's no entrance from Indian Creek, uh, from uh, Quivira Park into the Indian Creek Trail per se. You have to go back out past this sign, come up to Quivira Road, make a right hand turn, and you're going to go over the bridge there on Quivira, which is just a little bit south of 119th Street. And this is the view off the bridge. Uh, and you can see uh, Indian Creek there. You go past that, and now we're going to go over to Westgate Park. Um, so what what you did in the background of this picture, you can see the bridge, and the on the right hand side at the top of the the, the picture is the walkway that comes down to the Indian uh, Creek Trail. Mm -hmm. Now at the bottom of that, if you kind of flip yourself around. You go left, you're gonna go back to Cross Creek. If you go right, you're gonna be heading towards Westgate Park. And of course it talks about uh, Coronado never came to Cuivera, but uh, uh, other people did. <laughs> so <laughs> when you go under the, by, under the underpass there, uh, and by the way, you're, if you look behind the sign, you can see the underpass. We, we will actually walk under that. Oh, uh -huh. When you do that, then you get into behind, uh, oh, there's Fry Orthodontics. I think there's a, um, mm -hmm. there's a fast food place. There. I can't think what it is right up hand. Um, and you continue walking, and you're going to be on the left-hand side is the, the creek and a fair amount of trees and brush. And on the right-hand side, uh, you're going to pass behind uh, some uh, um, apartment complexes and subdivisions. And again, this is once you get a little ways away from Quivira, it's very nice. Uh, you have that sense of being out in the middle of nowhere, and, but with a nice blacktop, you know, <laughs> uh, walkway. When you get all the way to Westgate Park, which really is just a small subdivision park. And turn around, turn around, you'll see this sign, and I, you probably can't tell it too much, but there's actually a bridge there about halfway down the uh, the pathway. Mm -hmm. And so, from here, you you can well. Here's a, a better view of uh, uh, the roads right behind us. You can see the Westgate Park, and there's a bridge at the very end of the picture there. Mm -hmm. So if you head back, you come to an intersection, uh, and I hung to the left, which takes you back uh, the way we came. I haven't gone to the right, but the, the path, the Indian Creek Trail continues on to the right. So that's about as much of Indian Creek Trail as I'm gonna give you. Any, any questions? Are you ready for a big bull creek? <laughs> yeah. Ready? Okay, this is out in Edgerton. This is a little ride out. It's a, Takes us, you know, 25, 30 minutes to get out there. I believe this is the newest Johnson County Parks and Rec Division or District uh, Park. And it had, it's um, not complete yet, but they're, let's put it this way, it's complete, but they have an, an annex or an addition that they're working on opening up. So here's, here's the, the map of the park. On the left-hand side, uh, you see kind of a, it's a, a squiggly figure eight, and I'm highlighting that with, with some yeah. red. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the concrete walkway. Mm -hmm. So if you like flat and you don't mind driving half an hour or so to get to it, that's a nice flat area that you can walk in. My wife and I like to go on the trail, and okay. we jokingly said to each other, it's... Um, it's a training ground for if you want to go to Rocky Mountain National Park and walk the, the hikes there. <laughs> so what we did was we took the, the orange uh, 
the orange path out, and there there's a quarry run, hmm. and then there, there's a uh, Bull Creek run, and there's uh, some additional beyond that that we didn't go to. But we basically went up to the very top of the map, uh, circled around, followed the the path around all the way over to letter G, and there are signposts uh, at A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. And if you're going to go here, I suggest that you um, go to this site at the very bottom of it and print a map first. <laughs> because the first time we went out there, we got lost and spent two hours lost. The second <laughs> time, we went out there and purposely walked for two hours. So uh, we went all the way to G, which is all the way on the, the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. And then we walked back, and on the way back, we took that purple circle around, and it goes past a cemetery, which is the, the little star, uh, and then back to the, the concrete pathway. What is being developed is the portion of the park that's in the bottom right-hand corner. They are getting close to opening up the restrooms down there and opening up the pathway down there. We haven't been to that. The park ranger, and I'm going to tell you a secret, the park ranger said, if you go park down there, you can sneak in, and you can walk that part of the trail without having to walk the whole distance of it. And so we're, we'll pro probably do that sometime. But we've, we've done the Big Bull Creek one twice, uh, mm -hmm. two hours each time. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is what it looks like. Uh, from First of all, there's a quarry run because there's a quarry out there. And so you can see the I'm quarry. Still? Uh, and I'm not sure what they're quarrying. Uh, I don't know if it's limestone or or gypsum or what it is, but they're mm -hmm. they're digging something. Mm -hmm. There's a playground area which is close to the paved one, and we typically see some and a couple of pavilions. We typically see some kids there, uh, you know, enjoying the area. It's a, a kind of a nature uh, playground. And here's a here's another image of it. Well, then I'm going to go back a couple slides here and just show you something. <clears throat> if you see the, the red area where the, um, the concrete ends, and then you see the purple and the orange, uh, those locations, right where that junction is, is where you will see this little sign, like right there. And what it tells you is, uh, check the map. And I suggest you take a map with you, or as they suggest, take a picture of it with your phone. Be prepared for a long walk. Uh, know where you are on the trail. And I literally took a map with a pencil and pen, or pen, and marked it so I knew every time it came to a junction, I could tell exactly where I was at. Okay. Uh, because after the first time, I didn't want to get lost the second time. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, the one thing we did on the first time, we came to a junction and we didn't know which way to go to go back. And so uh, we went off one direction and kept saying, well, this doesn't look right. <laughs> so we went back the other direction and thought, oh, well, this doesn't look right. So we went back the first direction <laughs> and finally said, we're going to have to stick with one direction. Right. So the map would have been helpful. And we didn't follow the advice. And they do say to bring water uh, and uh, bring a candy bar if you really want to, if you anticipate getting lost or want to spend some time out there. Hey, Jonathan, is that near the uh, intermodal area too, or is that farther away? From... Hello, St. George. Uh, near what area? Well, you know what the intermodal is? It's, uh, it's a tr where they bring all the supplies in from the trains and that sort of thing. It's a really big out there. I didn't know if that. I. I it is. It I is out there by Edgerton, isn't it? Yes, and I think, it is. Because my kids go mountain bike riding out there, and they love it. They say it's a great park. Yeah, we we saw uh, we saw each time we went out, we saw at least one cyclist out there, mountain biker. Uh, there's not a lot, but there are some out there. I I took a a picture of my guide here, uh, <laughs> and and especially I like. These, I call them gnarly trees. They're just got some really gnarly trees in through there that I think are very picturesque. 
and then I had to slip one picture of myself in. But you can see what the trail is like. That's the easy part of the trail right there. Mm. And here's here's a shot of the cemetery. You can there's a you can't get to it, but I you could take a picture through the fence and over. And another gnarly tree. I mean, there you know you have to do some ducking, and in some places you have to do some stepping over. And this I thought was just kind of natural sculpture. I, I just liked the yeah. looks of of that. It's uh, along the trail. Hmm. And I didn't like the looks of that, but I thought I'd take a picture oh. of it. <laughs> locust, that's a honey locust. Yeah, you don't want to get picked by <laughs> that. No. So here's, here's where the trail starts getting a little bit more uh, rocky. And you can see my, my uh, trail model is showing the B sign. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, again, the map actually shows you where A, B, C, each of those sign point posts are so you can figure out where you're going. But you have to know if you want to go right or left. And, and uh, we actually, the second time through, ran into a park ranger. I had my map already in hand. And he pointed out to us that in most of these cases, you can take one the high road and come back on the low road. Uh, and there are some places where the, the trails come in together and you can you just want to hang to the left or hang to the right, whichever your choice is, you know. So it it makes sense to you know once you have the map in hand and and understand what's happening. Uh, and it really is uh, parts of it are very rocky uh, and uh, uphill, downhill, but it's also very pretty out there. Uh, yeah. And uh, I I enjoy some of the the colors and textures of of nature. How about animals? Do you see? Did you see any animals? Um, we didn't see any that I can recall. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, we heard uh, heard some birds periodically, but we really didn't see any animals out there. They're probably afraid of us. But <laughs> and here you can see the the incline too. There, are, it's uh, you have to feel fairly comfortable uh, walking on rocks and roots and and taking some inclines. And um, you know, there's the one shelf of limestone, I guess it is. Yeah. And again, here's the, the sea. They're, they will tell you um, periodically uh, these points are, are marked along the trail. What I really liked is there are a number of places where the, the roots have been run over by I don't know, either mountain bikes or people who are scuffing their shoes on them or whatever. But mm -hmm. the, the orange color is very striking. It's very pretty. I don't know what kind of tree that is, but I just thought it's it was a, gorgeous. It's an Osage orange. It's a what now? Osage orange. Osage orange. Okay. That's good to and, know. Uh, during World War I, they got those roots and ground them up because it may, they make a khaki colored dye. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Well, yeah. you see these, these roots all the way along. It's just very, very pretty. Yeah. And uh, I, I like the flowers. And then I had to give you a picture of an ugly shot here. I wanted, to take a, I wanted to take a selfie of me with the flowers. And so I put the camera behind the flowers. And all, then after I took it, I realized, well, I got the back of the flowers, not the front. Yeah. So uh, sometimes intelligence doesn't run. <laughs> Uh, there are little rock bridges like this one along the way. And so eventually, hopefully, you'll get back uh, to the parking lot. So uh, that's one of our favorites, uh, Big Bull Creek. Another real favorite, and this one is, um, this one tends to have some bikers on it, some cyclists on it, but they not as plentiful. This is flat, <clears throat> and it's the old golf course. Yeah, right. And this is one of our favorites. I mean, it, it is a, a great place to walk. And uh, the yellow shows it in the upper left-hand corner and you see basically the parking lot. And we would walk, there are multiple paths, but we would walk around this circle along the top part of it, go up mm -hmm. on that little flange up to the right. Mm -hmm. And from there, we'd walk up to Franklin Park. Circle San Franklin Park, come on back, and then walk either straight down through the neighborhood or 
uh, walk along the bottom of the loop there. And uh, either way gets us about an hour and two, hour and three minute walk. Uh, you can, if you're a cyclist and you don't have your own bike, you can uh, use the Ride KC bikes there. You, you simply rent them. I think it's like 10 cents a minute. Um, and you rent them with your cell phone. Mm -hmm. This is a, a view as your, the clubhouse is on the left-hand side. The sidewalk is uh, on the left edge. And they, I don't know what this grass is called. Maybe somebody's going to tell me, I hope. But it's, uh, they've got these little uh, horizontal frilly mm -hmm. things on the end. It's just beautiful. And in the background, you can't quite tell it, but there's a, there's a hill there, which the kids are always running up and down. Off to the right, you have some apartment complexes. And again, this whole thing used to be the golf course. And it's, uh, it's really got beautiful paved um, trails now. Is that the same place, Jonathan? Do they have a really nice park there for kids? Is that the same yes. place? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. In fact, this is part of it. The, off to the left behind me uh, is uh, our uh, rope, kind of a, a horizontal rope that the kids can climb on. Uh, to the front, of course, off to the front at the very beginning is a, is a very big park. This is kind of a playground area here. So there are at least two different areas there for, for kids. Yeah. And <laughs> you can see frogs, bullfrogs along the, the ponds. There are about three ponds throughout the park. Nice. And if it's been raining, uh, you get a little waterfall. Uh, this is down towards the uh, 95th Street end of it. So, and uh, I mentioned uh, Franklin Park. It's, uh, <coughs> it's up... Um, uh, it's part of our little walk. Uh, we do a little circle up there. So on the other map, if you saw that little flange or that little uh, oh, yeah. path that went up, well, it goes along, uh, what is that? Is that, it's not, um, I'm trying to think what street it is. Oh, it's row. It's row. Yeah, it's row. In fact, I marked this wrong. I'm sorry. Row is along the bottom there. Um, so where we come in is on the left-hand side. To the, the oval and walk in this circle and then head back down uh, down row I wasn't paying attention when I highlighted it so it's uh, that's part of our hour and a few minute walk and all and there's on the four I don't know how long it goes but on the fourth or the final I think it's the fourth Friday they have concerts in Franklin Park and so we've sometimes walked in the evening and just kind of walked around the circle and listened to the music um, and it's typically, um, you know, either big band or uh, like 60s to 80s music is not something we might appreciate, in other words. <laughs> so, <laughs> and this gives you, you can see the pavilion off on the right-hand side of the distance. Uh, here, again, are some of my favorite gnarly trees. Mm -hmm. And the path Those goes to the left and circles all the way around. Is that the old sage orange again? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't. Yeah, oh, I, they, I, I learned something. They planted them as hedgerows. Uh, oh, okay. Let's see. One of our former colleagues, Jean, I can't remember her name right now. Uh, she wrote a wonderful essay about the Osage Orange, and the oh. farmers planted them. And at first, they were these really windy hedges, and eventually, they grew up and up and up. And you can still uh, find some of those around uh, the city, including that one, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I like the, the um, stringy, ropey sense of, or texture of the, the bark. And mm -hmm. that's why I, I take pictures of them, because I like them. I think they're yeah. very attractive. Yeah. Here's the, the same, some mm -hmm. of the trees from a different angle. And you can see, again, there's a little playground here. That's where they have the, uh, the concerts and, and that sort of thing. And here's uh, yet another, and off to the right, you can see the parking. There's parking right there, so it's real convenient if you want to just walk around. Mm -hmm. and we, we have some friends who just simply go park at Franklin Park and walk around a few times. So, so that, if you, don't, if you want a shorter walk. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to jump all the way over to Tomahawk 
uh, Creek Parkway and the Tomahawk North Park. Um, and it's uh, part, all within the city of Leewood. And again, you have, this is an area where you do have to be careful about the, uh, the cyclists. There are a lot of them in, in this area. And I, I like the sculpture that's at the, the opening of the, the park. And oh, wow. <laughs> in, uh, in April, uh, this is the group we saw. And I'm going to show you what they look like now, <laughs> a little bit later. But I was uh, pleasantly surprised that they were able to let me get fairly close to them and take yeah, pictures of them. I, I guess I was not very threatening. <laughs> And uh, this one also, uh, as some parts of it get far enough away from uh, Tomahawk uh, Creek Parkway uh, to, to make it feel like it's, you're in the country and it's uh, kind of nice. But it also has some ponds along the way. And there are probably three or four places where you can park along the, the parkway there and enter this at any, any point to walk you know, up or down. And it's, uh, it's just a, a beautiful shaded parkway. You get to the very end of it, and or not even the very end, but partway down, and you come to this uh, Tomahawk Creek WWTF. And I thought, what in the world is WWTF? Until I read the sign, it stands for a Wastewater Treatment Facility Expansion. <laughs> I was so glad they clarified what that stood for. <laughs> but it... Part of, part of it's closed uh, across the top of the WWTF. That part of the path is closed. Eventually, you'll be able to make a complete circle around it. Mm -hmm. But at this point, uh, I went to the right, which takes you across uh, this, this bridge. And um, uh, you come up to uh, what I think is called the Leewood. I think, I think it's the Leewood City Park is what they call it. And here are some more of uh, our friends. The cyclists even have to kind of watch out for them. This guy had stopped <coughs> and let them kind of cross the path off to the left. And then he was able to continue on. I went all the way to the end and there's actually another parking area. And there's the this dog uh, Leewood dog park and it's literally fenced in area where you can let your dog run free if you have a dog. And I went a little bit beyond that, and the, the green sign way off to the right is Warnell. The interstate. That's the Warnell, yeah, interstate, and it's Warnell. Uh, so yes. that takes you all the way over there. And this, this path actually does connect in with uh, Indian Creek in, in other areas. So, and headed back over, and it's just a, a very picturesque. Area and here's what those geese look like now. <laughs> they have grown up a little. <laughs> and fortunately, they didn't have any young or any eggs, and so they were not. They were very docile. They didn't worry about me. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just walked through them and kept filming. How many of you know about the International Sculpture Garden Trail? Mm -mm. Helen does. Okay. Yeah. I, I um, had never heard it called that until I went looking for trails and found out that's, that's part of the Arboretum, the Overland Park Arboretum. Oh, oh okay. And uh, the star, the parking is up at the top. The star there is the Environmental Education Center and if you mm -hmm. come in and then make a, a left-hand turn, you can wind through the, the sculpture garden. Yeah. And uh, these are, uh, the Arboretum is great for walking anyhow. And you probably, I imagine most of you have been out there, but they've got some great sculptures, you know, yeah. throughout the, the Arboretum. Um, but there the, is still the area that is on that sculpture garden that is specifically, it's kind of a nice wooded area back there. 
and that's where you can find some rather interesting sculptures. <laughs> so. Oh. I like this one. If you look way up top, you can see the guy with the sledgehammer. Uh -huh. and, uh, at one point, I, I had made a list of the titles of these, and I have since lost it, but they're just fascinating to watch or to, to look at. And this this is one of my favorites. Uh, this one's during the you know the green period, and I actually like it better in the fall. Just oh kind of, wow! Kind of nice yeah. shades of brown and tan. Yeah, it's nice. So Heritage Park, we're getting close to the end. Um, the the star on the right hand side is is parking. The star on the left hand bottom is also parking, so you can park either way and walk a circle around Heritage Lake. But there's also a little tangent uh, at the very bottom that we often take, and uh, it goes out to an area where there's another little pond, a smaller pond. We often see uh, people fishing there, and there's mm -hmm. a nice little bench there. And mm -hmm. uh, if we get to it first, we get the bench. If we don't, then somebody <laughs> else has it. But it's a nice place to sit and, and just watch. And we'll, we'll walk this route and it's probably 55, 45, 55 minute walk, I think, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, but it's, uh, it's also nice, fairly flat. And we were actually out there one uh -oh. time. Uh, eagle. Yeah, which kind of surprised us. I didn't realize we had them in this area. No. Yeah, sometimes. And here's uh, the, the walkway around the, the big lake. Oh, and there are nice. some benches that are not shown, but the, you know, a nice area. And uh, there are restrooms there, open most of the year. The silo in the middle. And, mm. and when you take that little flange or a little side path off, you go down through and see a, a creek back in there. I don't know, that I know what the name of it is specifically, but it, uh, it's, uh, runs pretty fast if we've had some rain, otherwise it's you know, pretty low. And I just got some pictures of some pollen, just because I like pollen. <laughs> yeah, here's, here's one of the other benches uh, in the fall. Um, yeah, that's nice. So, um, there is this trail guide available. It shows the Johnson County uh, hiking and biking and in Johnson County, and so I thought I'd, I'll give you, you know, there's that uh, link for it. And oh, I thought I had one more slide. I guess not. I thought I had a map of the whole area, but I guess I didn't add it in. So, um, so what have I missed, or what do you, what comments you have? When Charlie said uh, Heritage Park, she, I think, was really talking about Little Mill Creek uh, Park which is in Lenexa and oh, yeah. um, Southern Shawnee. And that's the park that we uh, hiked on uh, the other week. Okay. Um, you know, I may have, let me see if I can find it fairly quickly here. I did have a, um, a map to show you just to give you a sense of how much there is in this area. Um, I may or may not find it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm having problems finding it. I guess that's... But anyhow, oh, just, yeah, just, uh, place and Turkey Creek, there's a trail that walks, that you can walk on that goes by Turkey Creek. Uh-huh. Um, goes through Merriam at the, it, you can start at the Merriam Community Center there and it will go, it'll take you all the way down past 67th and to 75th Street. Oh, and okay. It's a nice mm -hmm. park to walk in and, and a, you know, a trail to walk. Oh, okay. And where, where was the, the, uh, the, where you and Charlie had walked, where was that? By Mill, Mill Creek or? Mill, Mill Creek. 
It's off of 83rd Street. Before Flum. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it, in a, apparently Little Mill Creek, uh, I guess, oh, wait a minute. is Wonders. south. Yeah, it, it's south of 87th Street. And we were told by some neighbors that the city of Lenexa is boring a tunnel underneath 87th Street. So you can uh, cross that busy thoroughfare without uh, uh, going oh, through wow. the traffic. Uh, but it's it's uh, very pleasant. There's a, uh, uh, a park and athletic fields for uh, children, uh, and I guess adults, uh, on uh, 79th Street. But it, this is between Plum and uh, Lackman. Oh, yeah. OK. Okay, here I did find what I was going to show you. Let me share my screen one more time here. Just to give you an idea of what's available in Johnson County. Um, those are all, the red lines are all trails within Johnson County. So we started up here in the upper right hand corner. Um, well, let's see, where is it now? Oh, um, along the very top in a little bit, there's the Indian Creek bike and, and uh, hike trail. And going off to the left, I wonder if I can, I don't know if I can mark on this or not. Let me see if I can annotate. So we started up here and went down through the corporate woods, Shannon Valley, mm -hmm. Indian Valley, Mm -hmm. Down to Quivira, uh, and then I'm looking for Westgate, but I think it, Westgate's right about in here. So we've done that trail today, and then we did the, okay, where's our, uh, I think we did up this way uh, from this area here. That's the uh, Tom Hawk. So, and then of course down here is Heritage Park. And of course further south is uh, Big Bull Creek. So you can see there's a lot yet to, to cover. So, and even Stoll Park even has a, a path which we didn't talk about either. So, yes, sir, there's you, a comment. Yeah, you can kind of see where the uh, Indian Creek Park stops in Olathe. It's, if you see where Heritage Park is and you go to the left, there's a little circle right there. He's right there. Yep, I think that's okay. where it, that's where it, that's where it ends. Okay. Oh, that, yeah. park, that park goes all the way through Olathe up through to Overland Park, goes past Mid American Nazarene College. Hmm. I was up in that particular area and, and not too far from the community college either, either when you get there on, on Quivira. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 But Heritage, Heritage Lake is a really good little hike too. And it's got a pretty large lake too there. Where is that now? Well, the Heritage Park that you circled down. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a great place. For right my life. Yeah. On those trails. Oh, there's some heavy house. Okay. Yeah. Miller. I'm trying to see. Um, oh. Well, it, it's endless. <laughs> so, yeah. Lots of places in Johnson County. Uh, if you can't find a, a trail, you're not looking very hard. So 